All right, Deeper Knot community. I am here with a special guest. Not, not so much a guest, <laughs> but uh, we have our newest global community manager, Ryan, and wanted everyone to meet you. And also, um, maybe you could do a quick intro. Sure, yeah. Sure. Yeah, my name is Ryan. I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area, and I've been doing marketing for about a decade in different industries. So I've been in the blockchain NFT space for about a year now, and uh, I'm really looking forward to working here with Deeper and getting to know all you Deeper Knots and working together to build a better internet. All right. He is now officially a Deeper Knot, yeah. and he's even wearing the shirt. <laughs> so today, uh, this video is really, uh, we found a, a fantastic video regarding uh, the dangers of VPN. And we just kind of wanted to share with you. So consider it a, I guess, kind of a movie night. Sure, team so, movie night. Yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll kind of watch it together and kind of uh, break things down a little bit and just to get it in front of you guys. So let's, uh, let's take a look at it. Have you ever wondered if VPNs really do much for your privacy and security? Yeah. You see, I've been using VPNs for a long time, mostly to hide my IP address from the ISP, so they wouldn't send my parents angry letters about my internet usage. Sometimes I'd sign into sketchy Wi-Fi and wanted to double wrap. Circumventing geoblocks and censorship when traveling also came in handy. A lot of countries with that censorship. But something always felt fishy about VPNs. Since instead of trusting the ISP that you do know, you decide to trust some guys in Europe and an ISP that you don't know. I decided to check out what the VPN providers themselves are saying about this stuff. Malicious websites can infect your devices with malware. Unless you use NordVPN apps, keep your activity and identity private while you browse, stream, email, or download. Protect all of your devices with just one click. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I guess internet hacking is also that easy. I like this image. Selling online security and privacy as being all about VPNs is like telling people health and well-being is all about face masks. Which sounded a little bit like snake oil to me, so I decided to take a look at the history of snake oil. Yeah, this was interesting. What I learned was actually I had no idea about this. No. I feel bad for the Chinese. A long time ago, for it. Chinese yeah, immigrants yeah. moved to we'll San Francisco <laughs> to build the railroads of America and brought with them snake oil from the Chinese water snake as an ancient traditional but medicine think actually treat arthritis with joint pains. It does Since something great. No, yeah, it does. 20% EPA, a but... type of omega-3 fatty acid <laughs> known for its anti That cowboy came around, right? Yeah. Cowboy entrepreneur Clark Stanley Clark. started hawking as a cure-all that turned out to be beef fat, chili peppers, camphor, and turpentine. That sounds like a good bar. Stanley got slapped with symbolic fine of 20 <laughs> <laughs> Leaving him a wealthy man and spawning an industry of other products and salesmen That's just like from. him. Yeah, and it's crazy he was able to get away with that, still make his money. You see, the problem with VPNs is that just like snake oil, it's fantastic in its original form and function, which is to bridge two remote sites together or allow an individual to securely connect to a different network. The whole point is to tunnel your internet from a network of lower trust to a network of higher trust. A corporate VPN, for instance. It's kind of like entering a wormhole to get from point A to point B, bypassing everything in between. But things start to get dicey if you're going from a high to low trust, low to low trust, or an I don't know level of trust. And right now, it feels like a lot of fear monitoring in this industry. We got everyday folks convinced VPNs are what they need to keep themselves private and secure. But in reality, they're just paying for slower speeds time spent training machine learning algorithms, and being lumped in with all the spammers and hackers of these users. Sometimes you just have to remind yeah. people that when most really of the web browser is already encrypted money. without right. a VPN, right. and securing your DNS traffic in Firefox or Chrome is literally just a click. I pulled Alexa's top million websites and wrote a script checking for HTTPS support and it's found that website. most of the first 90,000 did. At this range, we're looking at sites like QTelFreeDownloadTrader.com. How many of you don't know? Sure we <laughs> First of all, is when companies want you to install their custom VPN client, forward your DNS over to be leak proof, and even install their certificate authority on your device, which is like charging people so you can man in the middle of them. Right. Okay, good but deal. at the same right. time, isn't there some value in masking your IP address when surfing the internet? We 
need to dig deeper. Deeper! When your deeper talks to a server, it sends packets tagged with a source and destination ID. These traverse the local network and a series of ISPs to reach a final destination. Anything logging traffic in between can see your source IP address, which can get geolocated to within a few zip codes away from your home. Your IP is probably shared by hundreds of other people and rotates regularly, so it's only an approximate location, not where you sleep at night. With a VPN tunnel, the original packet gets encrypted and wrapped in another IP header with the VPN server as the destination. The server will unwrap the packet and forward it through its own ISP, using its own IP address as the source. That's their server. Devices sitting before the VPN server can see your source IP, okay, so but not the destination. Still see who you are. Devices VPN sitting after can see the destination, right. but not the source. But the, the zones of visibility in the, in the network path yeah. But the VPN knows who you are. Yes, or they could tell them who you are. Say hi to Elliot. You they Elliot wants right. to save the world by being a hacker. Isn't that a he uses the VPN yeah. to mask his IP address, <laughs> but doesn't factor in all this other stuff. Instead of disappearing, Elliot leaves a blazing trail for the feds to follow. Elliot goes to jail. The end. Here's the deal. Focusing on just the IP header is focusing on just the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. When you look at a network packet, there's metadata present across all layers of yeah. the OSI model. Depending on the vantage from point of an observer in your network path, so there's different visibility levels into your packet. On the internet. Every piece of software you install, whether it's an app or plugin, go back can potentially be malicious, uh, surveilling your data and activity before it even leaves the device. On the local network, there's layer two addressing information that lets tech companies identify your location. This is where without the an network has the seven Wi Fi or Bluetooth positioning. Back in inspection and inspection. Looking at proximity and signal strength to nearby devices with no geolocations like your friend's right. phone, smartwatch, or wireless access point can help pinpoint your device too. It's the local ISP probably knows you're using a VPN based on the IP header alone, since just like Tor exit nodes, there's a fixed number of VPN addresses out there to track on a watch list. The VPN company and their ISP are privileged to see the real packets metadata and can fingerprint your device type with the IP, TCP, so and TLS so overall they can't VPNs find you, may claim to the not they can still find you by linking all the But you can bet that yes. the cloud providers and ISP servicing them are. There's probably also a money trail out there leading back to you, even with Bitcoin. Now, so the server you're going to, they can easily you tell you're on a VPN they can track since the MPU size that. or max transmissible unit on the packet yeah. is going to be smaller than usual, since we're tunneling one packet inside of another. Valdek SS even has code on his GitHub page Ooh. that can fingerprint the type of VPN you might be using and runs the proof of concept on his website. Watch list and this kind of fingerprinting helps sites like banks flag any VPN connections and deny you service. Right. But there's but also banks really ways to track care about where you are. I looked located. at payment companies yeah, though, too loud. owned by another company sure. that's owned by seven major banks to see which tracking methods were listed on their privacy policy. Oh, the people that you already are, know that's bad. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's why we have Bitcoin. Besides the usual suspects like Google Analytics, cookies, or social media plugins, there's also e tags, HTML5 local storage. Single pixel web beacons, JavaScript, and device tokens provided from your smartphone. All these identifiers get rolled into fingerprinting graphs designed to tie multiple IPs and accounts and devices back to a single user for tracking purposes. Advanced actors occupying multiple vantage points on a network path can correlate traffic patterns together, just like pieces of a puzzle. If you're at yeah, Starbucks like, using their Wi Fi, Google's registering your hardware like address, person. location, timestamp, true IP, Going Google to accounts, and Starbucks services. And using the public they correlate that with your internet done. Yep. And if you're That's the government, I, you can just buy have one of these. or ask for that data. This video is sponsored by Bad VPNs. <laughs> Forget 5 eyes, 9 eyes, 14 eyes. They're registering in all of the countries, like so no one feels left out. They protect your traffic with BES-256, military-inspired military encryption that safeguards all the keys so you don't have to. Yeah. Selling your data to telemetry partners lets them offer the low price of $2 a month. Pay now with Dogecoin and you'll receive a 3% discount. A lot of the cheaper Sign up now at badvpns.com. But seriously, yeah. let's look at the story of a Swiss company called Crypto AG. Crypto was founded in the 1950s by Boris Haglund, mm -hmm. who invented that's portable Satoshi. encryption that's devices that's for the United that. States in World War II. Yes. He became close friends with William Friedman, NSA's chief cryptologist, and formed a plan to end the dark age of American cryptology. 
Later on, the CIA, in German intelligence, secretly purchased the company in a German venture called Rubik. They always invent the coolest stuff. Selling crypto devices it's scary. over it is scary. Cool is, uh, could be scary for yeah. sure. They architected the ownership through a series of shell companies using bearer shares so that no names that? appeared in registration So they can hide and mask who they... This was all made possible are, right? professional firm like ADG, hard to do. now known as KPMG, DG. or the law offices of Markshire and Partners, firm? Right. now Markshire and Partners, who were all paid to sign the deals and keep quiet. They'd also operate through cover companies like Intercom Associates mm -hmm. or private partnerships with Siemens and Motorola yeah. to influence crypto's algorithms. The operation at one point accounted for nearly 40% of NSA's data take, wow. generating millions in profits, split 50-50 cash what? in a parking garage to plow in into a parking garage. <laughs> Intel yeah. from crypto devices helped the U.S. in everything from the Iranian hostage crisis, Falkland Islands war, and presidential negotiations. Wow. This is like Hollywood so crypto stuff, man. Really was is. just one time. But it's real. Yeah. These guys owned or influenced everyone else, too. As it's long as they were on the to be honest. I don't know, Phillips, this right? Right? These are everyday yeah, targeted with smear campaigns because they stayed independent. What's interesting about Rubicon is that a lot of other countries were all in on the secret. <laughs> they went after almost anyone, including NATO partners like Spain, Greece, Turkey, friendly countries like Japan, South Korea, the countries, man. They even got, Mexico. They got their fingers in there. And of course, Israel, Israel always gets the advantage. They use all this to their advantage. Leave it to the Germans to not spy on their friends. You see, the nature of VPNs makes it the perfect <laughs> asset for intelligence agencies. If I had to spy on people, I'd just set up a few dozen competing VPN companies, register in various offshore jurisdictions with hidden I think that's what they do. Then push it as a security and privacy tool for the mass market to adopt. It's perfect, tons since of people instead of having to collect all this of the like money, people will pay for the honor of shipping it so much. Like it's very, very Or you can just hack any legitimate VPN servers directly and save on the marketing budget. So, so VPN companies will often yeah. rent or white label their infrastructure to multiple other brands. Hacking the white label you has a pretty good payoff. Do you want VPN your own VPN, Ryan? Over 100 products Ryan out here yeah, we can owned do that. by just <laughs> two parent companies, with six of them in places like China. Exactly. But wait, why trust VPN Pro? Aren't they just another review site? Like, why is it 9.4 versus 9.3 stars? Yeah. Is there really a difference in that type of way there is. Yeah, right. How do you know they're not just good promoting Yelp some products while swearing others as part of a complex spy operation? Yeah. If you look at that one privacy guy's VPN chart, which unlike most review sites is actually yeah, kind of independent VPN and company. doesn't use silly terms like right. military grade crypto, you'll see this boom in VPN companies post noted around the 2013 era. In the spirit of custom scores, only one out of 185 how providers gave over 9 stars really on my right, red to green color scale. scale. So now you might be wondering, what are the use cases where a VPN makes sense? Should I even try to mask my IP address? How do I not get spied on doing this? Before you can answer these kind of questions, first you want to figure out what your threat model is. Is it cyber criminals, big tech companies, your government? All of Developing above. the right All threat of the yeah. can help tailor your level of paranoia accordingly so it's not in the way for it. Most brother, people, man. practicing digital <laughs> hygiene and cleaning up your online identity isn't that complicated. Use a unique password for every site. Use a unique email for every site. Use hardware security tokens for two-factor authentication. No, how do you, cause Use you random answers for yeah, cover questions. Exactly. Go through all of your settings on your That's accounts. Easy to do, Sanitize actually. your social media. Use virtual machines and multiple phones for different kinds of activities. Right. Don't click links or scan QR codes. So part of me thinks he's being sarcastic here because he says, oh, it's yeah, simple. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's being for average users and users to keep asking them all of this. And avoid this pirated is not software. simple or thought use a host Oh, you can see that smirk on his face. He's totally sarcastic. They yeah. manually yeah. need to verify yeah. Yeah. Nobody app. can do this stuff. If you're traveling and tempted by Wi-Fi, just bring your own internet through a portable hotspot or by telegram off your phone. None of those options involve using the Pico. You can do far more for yourself security and privacy overall. Now, don't get me wrong, but there are cases where you probably should mask your IP address. Circumventing IP blocks to watch Netflix, getting around national firewalls, bypassing download limits, performing yeah. offensive you know, security Netflix assessments, conducting OSINT research. Maybe you should try to keep your home IP address out of breach dumps for people to collect and target you specifically. In these cases, I strongly recommend renting a cloud VPS and just do it yourself. Whether it's WireGuard, ShadowSox, WebProxy, or even okay, well, let's do it. Well, well, This way, do this. you understand the technology a bit more, and now use a wormhole that you created and can personally control some of the infrastructure so this is of the exit. Awesome, but, but wait, 
Remember that one in the bottom of 85? The addition behind that binary does seem a bit more trustworthy than the others. I'm not going to say who, but I will share something with Jacksetta if you don't want to set up a VPN yourself. Here's how you find a good VPN. That's two things. Humanity and reputation. Humanity means knowing the people who actually own an operating service. You can reach out and they'll talk to you. The more shell companies, anonymity, and third parties involved, the less humane it becomes. When things go wrong, it's easy to opt out of being accountable. Reputation takes years to build, and a moment to Reputation is everything. If a provider's brand new, it's hard to imagine they put in enough work to build right. it up. If they're white labeling, you want people who are honest about cares, their mistakes. Right? Exactly. Communicate just, early just and often and, and white take label action to fix it. Even if it like means massive self-sacrifice, just when it's really right. convenient exactly. to do so. Uh, you want people to have a idea. personally yes. using their own products, so there's incentive to protect and make it better. With something valuable. Yeah, for us, I mean, if there's no community or reputation to trust them with your mother's purse, then maybe, just maybe, We've, we've, you found a good VPN. We've really invested a lot in you know our time and research. So yeah, that's a pretty good video. It's a really good video. Yeah. It does it does a great job clarifying for a lot of people who just don't know what a VPN might actually do, right? Uh, or never think about it beyond just hey, I'm I'm using a VPN, I'm protected. That's right. it. Exactly. And there's so much more to it, uh, and as we're moving to a you know, more and more online with everything we do in this world, it's more and more important to be fully protected and to understand where your data is, how to protect it from cyber criminals, big government, uh, tech companies. Yeah, exactly. I think, um, you know, I'm sure you heard of the, like friends or, or family say like, you know, I got nothing to hide. Yeah. What do you say to those people who say, I got nothing to hide, you know, they can, the government can look at all my data. Yeah, but do you want them to? What if they find what if there's one reason they find they make up in the future mm -hmm. and they can use your data in its entirety or a sliver of it to uh, incriminate you, Would to you make you throw other, you in jail yeah. because of some other reason. Yeah. Right. To other you in right. some way and just say you're not, if you're not following along for whatever reason, whatever that might be, right. they can use your data, your uh, log of information and just say, look, you're not, following what we want you to follow. Right. So now you're in trouble, you're in jail. You're, right, it gives other. them the tools to, to, to get you in trouble in the future. Yeah. Why do you want to open yourself up to that possibility? Right. When it's it's so much easier to protect yourself now. Right. Right, like right. to keep your data hidden, personal to you. Yeah, and knowing that, you know, I think a lot of people use VPNs because they're like, uh, you know, naively kind of believe that that they're gonna protect them, but in reality, um, it's not that safe as you can see. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, of course, with our deeper connect devices, um, it's it's peer to peer. And I think, you know, if if you have a Pico, okay, and I have a Mini, and we're connected. Yeah. What what's happening is uh, when I'm surfing, and, and say you're in the U.S. and I'm in I'm in uh, you know Europe somewhere, yeah. and I'm connected to you, and now I can view. Uh, U.S. kind of uh, Disney Plus information, or yeah, <laughs> and uh, you don't know who I am, yeah, right, and uh, you're not logging any of my info, right, right. So uh, it's safe. If there was a VPN, for instance, you know, if there was a a company VPN in the middle, yeah, and I'm viewing your stuff and I feel safe, but who has all the info and the data? Yeah. Not you. Right. <laughs> These devices do. Yeah. Uh, the VPNs do. Yeah. And then they can track it up. They can be subpoenaed by uh, governments. Right. They can, governments have a place to go to. Yes. They can't subpoena anybody here because they don't really know who this person is. Right. right? It's all distributed. Right. So it's very hard to pinpoint, but VPNs, because they're centralized servers, all they got to do is find that and they can incriminate tons of people. Exactly. Right. And you might think they don't log it, but somebody does your data is there somewhere in, right. in their if, logs. If it's not the VPN, cloud. it's the cloud, yeah. right? Or it's uh, through metadata, they can yeah. track you down by connecting other metadatas. And they were showing how uh, the different vantage points yeah. and by overlaying, and it's like a, a puzzle thing, yeah. they can figure it out yes. and then use it to incriminate you. It's just like marketing. You're creating a persona, a buyer's persona. They're exactly. creating an internet persona and they can pinpoint you. Yeah. So these devices, um, Obviously, we created them for a reason, and I think it's a really, really good solution to current pain points. Yeah. 
But there you have it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Yeah. And uh, it's a pleasure to introduce Ryan to the yeah. community. Yeah, I'm excited. And he's going to be more active in the community and um, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff together. Yeah. It's going to be a great year. Yeah, absolutely. I'm Rest ready for it. All right. Thanks for having Take me. Take care, everyone.